Right then. Come along, it was very, very hot. There was a big section of very exposed and very hot area. I had to put the hat on. Um, and I did manage to find a shaded area um, for a section of the walk, which was very, very good. In fact, I could have done more of it like that. It was very hot. <sighs> yeah, you think you're never getting there, and then you get there. You think you're never going to get there. I've done lots of exploring around here before, by the way. None of this is new to me. I've been through that gate over fields, gone over other fields. I've done a lot. Somebody on a bike coming down now. So here we are. This is a junction point. If you go down there, you can cross over the road and climb up Barrington Coombe. There's also a very, very dangerous road down there. As well. Very dangerous. Fast. No pavement. So what happens now is we've got a steady climb up. Like I said, it's tapered at this end. It's not a great big, big processional route. Like at the other end. So I've walked all the way along the lower route. There are other little lanes and tracks you can explore and, and things like that. But when you've, you're lying on a bus service, you can only do so much. But in the past, I have weaved... Especially when I had my camper van, I didn't have to worry about time. And I used to do a lot more exploring. Because you don't have to think about a bus. And how long it would take you to get from A to B. So. It's going on for half two. Basically, once I get up the top here. I'll be within range of Longwood. Somebody come in a runner. I just put it on. I just put it on hold a minute. Right, there are shaded areas en route, little bushes up here. It's a steady climb. It's like I've done a lot of climbing. This particular route I've done today has been quite a climbing way. Um, if I'd done it the other way round, it's always a climb. Whatever you do to get out with cheddar, right, it's always a climb, right? Every, if, whenever you think, oh, I'll go for a walk from cheddar, you've got to climb to get out of the gorge. But once you're over here, you can choose routes. I deliberately chose doing this one in reverse today. But what I'm feeling now is a lovely, lovely, quite firm breeze cooling my neck and my back. It's coming up from behind. And look at that view over there. A lovely view, folks, right over there. Lots of lovely views around here. So I'm going to do a steady climb up. I'm hoping I reach the top by at least three o'clock. Like I said, you have to be paced by the bus. It's, it's awful compared to what the life I had when I had my van. There was no pacing. I could just come back at eight o'clock if I wanted to. This puts pressure on you. And sometimes you have to speed up unless you've already had a big hike. And you suddenly realise, come on, you've got to put your foot down. <sighs> There'll be lots of people who've got no idea what it's like to be without a vehicle. I went years with the one. Obviously I was working, nurse, teacher, had a young family, I always had a vehicle. And then uh, when I retired, I took early retirement and I had a vehicle... I didn't have a vehicle the first time for six years. I'd had a camper van for a couple of years after I retired. I had a camper van for two years and then I went six years. I used to hire a car's mind in between to go on holidays in. I would hire 
and take my tent with me. Then I got another little windfall and uh, I bought another camper van. But I'm never very good at buying stuff. I always get ripped off. <sighs> she had lots of things that didn't work. But the thing that did work was her engine. Um, and she got me all over England, Scotland and Wales. And I had her for six years. I've now been without a vehicle. <sighs> for two years, six months. I haven't had one. I haven't driven since. And that time's gone very fast. Very fast indeed without a vehicle. And of course the places I can't visit in those two years, I've only managed to get up on the Quantocks twice. The last visit I made to the Quantocks was on a bus and a train. The last time before that was with Alberta, my camper van. The day she was vandalised and her exhaust was damaged. Um, she never went there again with me and I had to sell her for hardly anything. Um, but when I was walking up on the corn tops, I used to say I dread the day I haven't got my van. And I'll tell you why. I don't mind getting buses. I don't mind getting trains. It is a palaver though, especially now because I have to travel, you know, a good 30 odd miles to Taunton on a train. That doesn't take long. And then I have to get a bus. That takes about half an hour to get me to Bicknoller. There's not enough time to do what I used to do where I could just relax and walk and go back to my vehicle, have a cup of tea. So I do miss, and I don't, like I said, I've only been out there once really in two years. And I was a frequent visitor. I am just glad that I had all those experiences with my van. I visited all those castles, villages, towns, cathedrals, churches. I packed a lot in when I had her, a lot. And I'm glad I'd done all that. I really am glad I'd done it all. Because I can, I've still, and I've done my videos. You see my videos? I like my memory now. And the videos take me back to the, when I went to visit Edinburgh Castle or Stirling Castle. Or I went to Schoon Abbey. Or Dunfermline Abbey or Canterbury Cathedral, Bury St Edmunds, I can take you St David's in Wales, I can take you all over the country and it's all stored in the cloud. But my cameras are getting very very tired now these ones, this one's struggling now. Um, I really think if the quality is poor, I'm sorry. I like these cameras, but I was hoping to go up a grade. But the one I want is a small one again. I don't want a big heavy one to cart about. It's about a thousand pounds. It's got better magnification. It's got other little features on it. And, um... <coughs> I do want to get it eventually. <sighs> yeah, I'm struggling today with my breathing. I think it's the hay fever. <sighs> I'm doing um, a very slow Roman walk at the moment. Just trying to video and reflect. <sighs> it's a steady climb up, this one. It's a steady climb. There's no point me trying to rush it. I can't do it. Because then I'd have to rest for ages and I would have lost any time I'd thought I'd gained. I would have to stop. It's a little shaded area here. 
As for my cheese and crackers, I don't normally have them to the last part of the walk. I'd love to have them earlier, but I get terrible indigestion. But I do love my cheese and tomato. It's only a little couple little pieces and a packet of crisps. I never really eat a lot. I take a lot, just in case. And sometimes, yeah, I eat the lot. Right, we're going out into the hot air again. I'm going to turn off for a little while now. Over and out. Right, folks, there's the aerials. We're nearly up the lane. We're doing very well. Now, if I'd done the, the reverse walk, I'd have to have climbed up that processional route, and believe me, this is tapered. This is a lot easier. We'll be all downhill now for till we get to Longwood. Um, so there's a way across there to across a stile that way. I ain't doing it today though. <sighs> yeah, Longwood, but I might skirt Longwood today. So I done it when the bluebells were out. <sighs> if there's no cows in the fields, I'm doing the fields. Because I haven't done that for a long time. It's a long time since I've done the fields. And not only that, last year they had cows in them. So I wouldn't do them. <sighs> Beautiful, isn't it? This is the wild Mendip Hills. The area of outstanding natural beauty. I can feel my legs have done some hills though. I can feel it. I mean, I'm trying to do at least one of these big walks a week. Because you have to try and get it in, in the summer months, before the evenings draw in, if you see what I mean. Even though I still got to get that six o'clock bus. Um, I've got limited time because I can only get on a bus at nine o'clock onwards. There's restrictions with the pass. So, in the winter, when it's dark at half three, four, I lose, I need to be on the bus by about four because it'll be dark. So I lose those two hours. So you don't get the bigger walks in. Now, like I said, when I had the van, I would have, and I would felt all right, I'd actually do an even bigger hike than this today. I would have done Velvet Bottom, come down here, headed for um, the hill fort. You know, I would have headed for the hill fort, see? Cause that breeze is very welcome. Very, very welcome indeed, that breeze is. In a minute, we'll come to a gate. Hopefully there's no cows in that field. All the fields I go in now have risk cows. Right, over in that.